construction of writing, organization, unity, cohesion. We're talking about trying to make the words fit together, not just inside of a sentence, but how they link to other sentences, to the paragraph, and then to the wider passage. We're going to start with transition words. Those are words that are going to sit in between two sentences, and we've got to make sure that they're logically connected. Johnny has never been a very good athlete. Additionally, he has won his last five races. There's a problem here. We found out in the first sentence that Johnny is actually not very good at sports. Yet when we say additionally he's won his last five races, this implies some kind of continuation. This doesn't make sense. What we're looking to try and see here is some change from one part to the other part. Some contrast. Johnny's never been a very good athlete, however, he has won his last five races. When you see an underlined word that sits in between two sentences, we need to make sure that the linking between those two sentences is logically connected. In this case, a contrast makes sense. That doesn't mean that you always need to have a contrast. Let's take a look at Sergio here. Sergio's never liked cats. On the other hand, he refuses to be in the same room as one. Well, that doesn't make sense. We know he doesn't like it, and he doesn't want to be with them. Those are two of the same thing. So a contrast, like on the other hand, doesn't fit logically between these two sentences. What might work differently might work a little bit better. In fact. In fact is an emphasizer. Blah, 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 blah. In fact, more of the same stuff. Sergio doesn't like cats. In fact, he won't even be in the same room. Now, I personally like cats, but I can appreciate that Sergio does not. And we want to make sure that as these sentences connect, we're logically using the right transition word. Let's take a look at Kristen. Kristen needed a lot of different colors for her project. Nevertheless, she bought the large box of crayons. Well, in the first part, what we find is that she needs a lot of colors. And in the second part, it seems like because of that first part, she buys a large box of crayons. This is a little different than a contrast or a little different from emphasizing or continuation or similarity. This is cause and effect. What happens in the first part causes the second part. So what might fit better instead of nevertheless? Therefore. Therefore has got an element of causality. Because of this, I do this. I needed a lot of different colors, therefore I had to buy the large box of crayons. We put a little box here to help you kind of organize your thoughts into these little buckets. Contrast, cause and effect, similarity or continuation. For the most part, these are words that you understand in English. The thing that winds up happening is that if you rush through and don't actually compare the sentence before with the sentence after, sometimes that's where the transition words cause problems. So make sure if you see something underlined in between two sentences, you're comparing the sentence before to the sentence that follows the transition words. Here's an example. We move from just having transition words to sentences that are going to be linked together, logically. Joy used to think Sudoku puzzles were impossible. Now we see we're going to be inserting some kind of sentence. So before we decide what can go here, we actually have to keep reading. This is one of the big mistakes. A lot of times students go right to the answer choices here, but don't understand that we need to logically connect the two sentences. What happens after? She can now solve the hardest puzzle in just a few minutes. So before she had trouble, now she's really good. If we take a look at this question, given that all the choices are true, which one provides the most effective transition? We're going to need something that changes in the way that Joy does this work. Let's take a look at the answer choices. A. Once she learned a few tricks, though, they became easy for her. This makes a lot of sense. Before she wasn't good, now she's much better at it. So if I were looking to logically connect these two sentences, some event changing to her skill set would be necessary. She learned some tricks, she's now a lot better. Continuing with transitions, here we've got some firefighters. Firefighter training prepares you for any danger you may face. We then have something underlined, the program can be expensive, and you will immediately know how to safely and effectively react to it. Well, at the beginning we were talking about facing danger. We then have an underlying portion that references the cost of the training program. That should strike us as being a little out of whack. Why? Because we hadn't been talking about price before. When we take a look at this question, they're looking for an effective transition. If we want to find effective transitions, what we want to be able to do is make sure that we're keeping the logical connection between the part that's not underlined before the question and the part that's not underlined after. Why? Because that text is definitely staying. So at the beginning we've got something dangerous and then we've got to be able to react to this. Let's take a look at the answer choices one by one. The expense doesn't make that much sense because we're not talking about cost. When we take a look at G, when you're in a life-threatening situation, 
Okay, well life-threatening situation has to do with danger, also has to do with being prepared to react to this. We take a look at H, it's exciting to be a firefighter? I don't doubt it. I'll bet you it is really exciting to be a firefighter. But we were talking about reacting to danger, so H doesn't quite cut it either. When we take a look at J, you get to ride in the truck. Now, let's be honest, riding in the truck is pretty sweet. But again, we're supposed to be finding something that relates to danger. Only one of these answer choices actually connects the idea of the danger and reacting to that dangerous situation. So we're looking at G, when you're in a life-threatening situation. Introductions and conclusions. We've talked about linking two sentences by underlining one word in between. That was the difference between having something that was a contrast or a continuation or a cause and effect. We've looked at having sentences link sentences before and after. If we're thinking about expanding our perspective, we now have to take a look at sentences that would link entire paragraphs. So when we take a look at introductions and conclusions, first piece of advice, make sure that before you answer an opening sentence that's described describing the rest of the paragraph, read the rest of the paragraph. If the question says which one most effectively introduces the subject of this paragraph, you can't answer it until you've kept reading. So in this case, we'd have to pause and before we answer it, read the rest of the paragraph. What do we find out in the rest of this paragraph? Having a cat is awesome. Apparently, cats can do all sorts of things on a personal level. They can help you relieve stress. They can relax you. They can also be playful. They can be fun. They can also do a lot of things like kill animals around your house. Cats are awesome. Knowing the cats are awesome allows us to go back to the introduction and say, if we're looking for a sentence that's going to set the topic sentence to relate to the rest of what follows, it should be something that says, cats are awesome. Well, as we look at these answer choices, some of these, while related to cats, are totally random and tangential to the rest of the paragraph. The fact that cats were first domesticated thousands of years ago, good for the Egyptians. That doesn't have any relevance here. Owning a cat has both personal and practical benefits. Now what are we talking about? The awesomeness of cats. It relaxes you, it helps reduce stress, and it might kill household pets. So C seems pretty good. But before you ever choose an answer, you might as well look at all the answer choices. When I take a look at D, some cats can live to be over 15 years old. Well, that's good for the cats, but again, totally irrelevant to the rest of the paragraph. So make sure when we're talking about introductions that we make sure that that sentence ties to the rest of what follows. In this case, we're looking at C. The last piece that we need to make sure that we understand in creating a coherent passage is how we can organize the sentences within a paragraph so that they're logically flowing from one to the next. If we take a look at this example, we're going to be talking about kudzu. Now, if you're from the north, you may not be familiar with kudzu. I confess, I certainly was not. But if you're from the south, you definitely know what it is. Why? Because it's an invasive species that has done a lot of damage. If I'm taking a look at these sentences and trying to figure out what the best order is, I need to be thinking about a couple of different things. First, you need to make sure that you don't just reread each sentence trying to get your ear to pick up where it sounds best. That isn't really a thing. Sounds best is not going to help. There are specific things that you can look for. Number one, you can look for a sequence in terms of action or chronological order. For instance, if we're going to have me talking about when I'm young and then I'm middle aged and then I'm old, there's some sequence that needs to be established there. It's also possible that we need to talk about verb tense because it'd be something in the past, something in the present, something in the future. It's also conceivable that what we want to pay attention to are transition words. Remember, we've already been discussing transition words. They need to appear in a place that logically connects both the sentence before and the sentence after. So seeing a contrast word like however or additionally can be a huge help. And finally, you might want to take a look at pronouns. Because you can't start using a pronoun unless you've established what that pronoun might be replacing. Remember, it's antecedent. In this case, when we take a look at sentence four, we've got one such example is the vine-like plant called kudzu. Well, one such example of what? We'd have to know what we were already discussing. If we look earlier in the paragraph, what do we find out? In sentence two, we've got exotic species can cause unexpected destruction. What are we finding out about kudzu? It's one of those exotic species. So it can come right after sentence two. But before we decide that that's right, let's take a look at sentence three. Sentence three says, originally from Asia, it rapidly spread. What's the it? 
It's kudzu. So we're going to need to be able to put this sentence four in between a opening discussion of some bad species and then having after it the specific thing that referenced kudzu with it. So what we're looking for here is that sentence four needs to be before sentence three. So our answer is J.